Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the area as well as the perimeter of a rectangle when given four points. So when we're given four points, we don't really know actually if it's a rectangle, if it's a square, you know, actually it could be a parallelogram or just any kind of quadrilateral. So we don't want to make any assumptions. What we want to make sure we do is first plot our information to see what exactly we're dealing with. So the first thing we're going to do is just plot them on the Cartesian coordinate system and label every single point. So E is going to be at 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, up 1. F is going to be at 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. F, E. G is going to be at 5, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And H is going to be at 5, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, boom. So you can see here, it does look like actually every single side is uh, it does look like it's a rectangle. Each side is going to be exactly the same. Um, so, and now this one is pretty nice because basically to find the area, all I simply need to do is find the base and the height. And remember, we want to orientate that so the base is going to be flat and the height is going to be a measure that's going to go directly to the hop, top. So we can see that if we were going to call, we could call EH our base. And we can really just count you know, the difference on the base here. You can see that it's equal to you know, two units. Um, also, we could kind of go back to our, our number line theory, if you remember, and really look at that. The EH is the difference of our x coordinates. So I go to E to H, and I just find the difference of them. Absolute value of 3 minus 5, which is equal to negative 2, which is equal to 2. However, I know, guys, it's much easier just to look at the graph and say it's 2, right? But I just want to go back. That was something that we learned before, and I just want to say, you know, hey, that's why that works. Um, and then EF is going to be our height. So if we find EF, we can just count that. We don't need to do the absolute value. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's equal to 4. So therefore, the area of a rectangle is base times height. So in that case, it's going to be 4 times 2, which is equal to 8. OK? Um, now to go ahead and find the perimeter, we've got to find the distance of all of, I'm sorry, the distance around the rectangle. Basically, we've got to add up all the sides. Now, what's nice about this is I know that this is a rectangle, right? I mean, I can basically, it's very easy for me to say, you know, that's 4. Well, I, I can easily count here 1, 2, 3, 4. And then these two are 2 and 2. So it's very easy to kind of verify that. And let's just go and add them up 4, 8, 10, and 12. So perimeter is going to equal. Um, all the side lengths. So I'm just going to write it out just so you can kind of see EF plus FG plus GH plus HE. So there's four sides, and we're basically just adding them all up. So 4 plus 2 is 6, so that equals 12. Okay, just so you can kind of see, you know, it kind of written out there. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, we have the points A, B, C, and D. So let's go ahead and plot them up. A is at negative 2, 1, 2, 3. B is at 1, 6, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. C is at 5, 2. Uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2. And D is at 1, 2, negative 1. OK. Now. You got to be careful, especially when you're graphing this, because um, you know, for me, it looks like a rectangle, but it kind of looks a little tilted. I'm not very, very sure if I'm exactly dealing with a rectangle or not. So what we want to do is we want to use the distance formula to be able to confirm. Now, I'm going to do the distance formula for two sides, and then I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem for the other two sides. So let's go ahead and figure out, um, let's do the distance formula first. And let's, well, I forgot to label these. That's B. This is C, and that's D. So let's go ahead and find, remember the distance formula is equal to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1. So whenever you're given two points, you're basically, or two points, you're basically just going to label them x and y's with subgroups either 1 or 2. And then you're finding the distance and squaring them, which is basically the Pythagorean theorem, which I'll be able to show you and verify when I do the other points. But for right now, let's just kind of say, all right, here's your um, you know, let's, here is your basic formula. Let's just kind of use the formula, and then we'll kind of show, again, the relationship with the Pythagorean theorem. So let's figure out uh, AB. Let's do AB and AD. Let's find these two lengths. So if I want to find AB, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to label my points as x and y's. Right, because they're both x and y's. But to differentiate between which x I'm talking about, I'm going to say this is x1 and that's x2. 
And then I'm going to say that's y1 and that's y2. So just make sure you keep the 1s and the 2s together as far as x and y's goes. Then all I'm simply going to do to find the distance, because distance of a distance is equal to a, b, all I'm going to do is just plug those values into my formula. So I'm going to have x2. I don't want that there anymore. So I'll have uh, x2, which is 1 minus negative 2. Now make sure you plug that in, 1 minus negative 2. A lot of people will drop off the negative thinking it's already like there. So just make sure you keep that. And then I have y2, which is 6 minus 3 squared. Okay. And now let's go and simplify it. Well, 1 minus a negative number is really like adding. So that goes 3. 3 squared is going to equal to 9. And then 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 squared is, again, equal to 9. So therefore, I'm equal to the square root of 18. Um, now, dealing with the square root of 18, I want to approximate that. So I'm going to do square root of 18. I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, which is 4.2. OK, so therefore, we're dealing with that at 4.2. Now, that's actually very important. I can actually stop here for a second and verify. Well, if I know, actually, I don't know this distance height. right? I've got to find that distance because I've got, to orientate, I've got to orientate this triangle so I have one base. And I'm going to call AB my base. Therefore, the height is the height's always going to be perpendicular to your base. So therefore, I need to find the length of my AD. So let's go ahead and find AD. And let's do the exact same thing, except instead of calling, um, instead of calling B x2, y2, I'm going to now call D x2, y2. And you could do them x3, y3. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You could 4, 5. It doesn't really matter what letters you want to, or what numbers you want to assign to them. It's just very important that you make sure that you distinguish which is which. Okay? So again, I'm just going to plug them now, same thing, into the formula. So now my x2 is 2 minus x1, which is negative 2, plus my y2, which is now negative 1, minus y1, which is 3. So 2 minus negative 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Uh, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is also 16, which equals the square root of 32. And then all I'm simply going to do here is just take the square root of 32 to approximate that. And I'm getting 5.7 is my approximation. OK, so to find the area, if you notice here, again, if we were just like to rotate this, so it looked like that. You know, there's A, B, and there's C and D. You could see that A, B is my base, and A, D is my height, right? So all I'm doing is like turning. I'm not changing the size of the rectangle. All I'm doing is turning it. So therefore, that is my, I'm going to boot, no, my A, B, I'm sorry, is my new base, which is 4.2 times 5.7. And that is going to be equal to uh, 4.2 times 5.7. 23.94. Now, if the problem says it's a rectangle, you can assume that the opposite sides are exactly the same. So if I say this is 4.2, then I know that that's 4.2. If this side length is 5.7, then I know that side length is 5.7. But that's only if the problem says it's a rectangle. We're not sure if it's a rectangle, or at least in this video, I'm not going to say that we know for sure it's a rectangle. So the best bet is to verify this. Now, you could do the, you could do the, um, you could do the distance formula again. Or what I kind of prefer is just using the Pythagorean theorem. And the way that I use the Pythagorean theorem is to create right triangles. So basically, you know, to find AD, just create a right triangle. How far is this distance? I can easily count. 1, 2, 3, 4. How far is this distance? 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? And that's basically what I did over here. When I was doing AD, I was subtracting them. right? And you see I got 4 and 4. And each time I squared them, I got 16. So therefore, when finding AD, AD is equal to the same thing. It's you know, 4 squared plus 4 squared, which is equal to the square root of 32, which again is going to be 5.7. Now let's do the same thing over here. Over here, this distance to, from D to C is 1, 2, 3. And this distance is 1, 2, 3. So therefore, if I want to see DC, 
using the Pythagorean theorem, that's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared, which is the same thing what I had here, which is 9 plus 9. So therefore, that's going to equal the square root of 18. So to find the perimeter, all I simply do, now I've verified that it's a rectangle, all I'm going to do is do, I'm going to find each side length and multiply by 2, because I have two 4.2s and I have two 5.7s. So I'll do 2 times 4.2 plus 2 times 5.7. So 2 times 4.2 is 8.4, plus 2, 5.7 is 11.4. And therefore, that's going to be 19.8. But I'm going to go back in my calculator just to make sure I did all my multiplication correct. 19.8. So there you go. Perfect. So, um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the area as well as the perimeter given a rectangle. Thanks.